You have something special. You have greatness within you. That is the quote of the day. Welcome back to the Quote of the Day show. I'm your host, Sean Croxton of SeanCroxton.com. Happy Tuesday to you. Today's featured speaker is Les Brown. He's back with another one. And I probably could have picked five or six different quotes from this particular talk, but I really like the one, you have something special. You have greatness within you because it's so true. And uh, Les talks about the people who we surround ourselves with. And this is something I learned maybe five or six years ago. I read a quote somewhere that said, uh, your income is the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I was like, wow, that's so true. And uh, made some changes, got rid of the toxic people and brought in the nourishing people and spent more time with them. And my life has completely changed. And I hope that you can do the same and uh, check out less and hear him tell it. Here's less. So I say to you, see, I only attract millionaires of millionaires in training. He's going to get that in a minute. You have something special. You have greatness within you. And the only reason you are here, you are my assignment. You can feel me. Some of you feel me right here in your heart of hearts. And my goal in, is to get past your mind and into your heart. So it's necessary that you, you have the mindset that I can do this. You've got to begin to believe and to fortify that belief and feed that belief by listening to tapes, going to seminars and workshops, by challenging yourself, by stretching yourself. It was Osborne who said, unless you attempt to do something beyond that, which you've already mastered, you will never grow. And, and as you begin to challenge yourself, you'll discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. The other thing is you begin to look at yourself, look at your dreams, and, and, and begin, begin to experiment and stepping into your greatness one of the things that's very important, whatever goals and dreams that you have, repeat after me, please. Make your move before you're ready. You have Price Pritchard, who's a great, great motivator and, and, and trainer. He said, make your move before you're ready. We're in, instructed in, in life to walk by faith and not by sight. See, you want to really begin to stretch yourself. You want to become a risk taker. You want to raise the bar on yourself. Most people won't do that. See, most people engage in low-life living, low-risk living. This God said, if you're not willing to risk, you cannot grow. And if you cannot grow, you cannot become your best. And if you cannot become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? I like what Helen Keller said. Life is short and unpredictable. Eat the dessert first. <laughs> and so... You want to begin to take some chances. You want to begin to challenge yourself and make it okay to fail and learn from your failures. Don't allow fear of failure and the, the, the allure, the attractiveness of playing it safe in life to draw you in. You can't get out of life alive. You've got to die to leave here. Other thing is you look at yourself and look at your dreams. Detoxify your life. Write that down. See, I think that most people never achieve their true goals in life because they're surrounded with too many toxic, negative, energy-draining people. You've got to look at the people in your life and ask yourself the question, what is this relationship doing to me? How is it impacting my life? Am I a better person? Sidney Poitier wrote a book called The Measure of a Man. And it, it, it's powerful, but I encourage you to get the tapes. I love his voice. And, and he said something in there. He said, when you go for a walk with someone, something happens unconsciously. It's not spoken. Either you adjust to their pace or they adjust to your pace. Whose pace have you adjusted to? See, you want to surround yourself. My, my daughter, Ona Brown, who's a speaker and coach, she says, call forth your team, but make sure these are people that you can learn from. i never forget, I'm on a special board with a, a Bishop T.D. Jakes, and we went into a board meeting. He looked at everybody before opening the meeting. He said, as soon as I know as much as you do, you're fired. And with that, the meeting is now open. Everybody continued to learn on that board. <laughs> Trust me that. A friend of mine, Dennis Kimbrough, a motivational speaker out of Atlanta, he said, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to get a new group. So as you look at yourself and look into the future, call forth your team. Uh, George Frazier says, your network determines your net worth. 
Who do you allow to be in your ear? What kind of relationships are you developing? Are they an asset to you or they are a liability? Do they elevate your spirits or do they tear you down? I think there two types of people, nourishing people and toxic people. Nourishing people, they bring the best out of you. They encourage you, they inspire you, they hold you accountable. Toxic people, they are critical people, always telling you what you can't do. They're always measuring your possibilities based upon their failures. My mother said, never let anybody tell you what you can't do, son, especially if they haven't done it. <laughs> they don't know what's possible for you. So as you begin to look at yourself, begin to identify the relationships that you communicate with most and say, hey, is this relationship helpful to me? And then think about some people that you need to bring into your life, that you can learn from, that you can grow from. I joined the National Speakers Association when I decided that I wanted to speak. I wanted to, to be around the people that were doing what I wanted to do. I'll never forget when I saw Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. He said, you, you have something special. You have greatness within you. And you can do more than you can ever begin to imagine. And here I am. And the audience said, oh my goodness. I'd read The Power of Positive Thinking 17 times. My hero. And I saw him backstage and... I said, Dr. Peel, hi, my name is Les Brown. I, I've listened to your tapes and I, I've read your books. Um, they gave them to us in special education, sir. And one day I would love to be on stage with you. And he looked at me and said, it's possible, young man. It's possible. But this man, when he spoke, he gave me goose pimples, deep baritone voice, dope spoke from his diaphragm. You have something special. You have greatness within you. He override the inner conversations in my mind. I I'll never forget um, a, a gentleman, what a brilliant man, a Harvard graduate, um, Dr. Carter G. Woodson. He said, if you can determine what a man shall think, you never have to concern yourself with what he will do. If you can make a man feel inferior, you never have to compel him to seek an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. And if you can make a man feel justly an outcast, never have to order him to go to the back door, he'll go without being told. And if there's no door, his very nature will demand one. See, we live in a world where we're told more about our limitations rather than our potential. How many of you have ever been told that you couldn't do something? Raise your hands, please. You know, MIT did a study that if I say to you, you can't do that, that 16 people have to come alone and say, you can do that, you can do that, you can do that, to neutralize that. And the 17th statement that you hear, you can do it, will be the one that will finally stick. So you have to watch who's speaking into you. You've got to begin to monitor your mind. And, and you've got to begin to literally be proactive in programming yourself to success. Be ye not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You've got to take responsibility to make that happen. And as you begin to do that, you'll begin to see some incredible changes in your life. I understand now when Earl Nightingale said, all of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. As you begin to look at your dreams and look at your goals, write this down. Make no your vitamin. See, most people stop short of their dreams and park and get off the highway of life because of the rejections of life. You will always be rejected. It's no big deal. Jack Canfield said rejection is a myth. It's not like when somebody says no and then they slap you. No, it's just, you know, to me, make no your vitamin. Get excited about the no. Why? Because every time someone says no, that brings you another step to a yes. You're getting closer. Trust me, you will win if you don't quit. You will win if you don't quit. Even a broke clock is right twice a day. You cannot go wrong with Les Brown. It is so easy picking clips from Les's talks because the whole thing, you can just like throw a dart at and you just land on something that could be a clip on the show. It's, it's amazing. Uh, that came from his program, Step Into Your Greatness, which is available at success.com in the success store. It's an instant MP3 download. So head on over there, pick that up, listen to the whole thing over and over and over again. So many quotes in there. Make no your vitamin. You will win if you don't quit. Just, just on and on and on. The man is a quote machine. So again, check out more of his stuff and I will see you tomorrow with Dr. Dane here. Peace.